The debate last night, it oh. is what everybody is talking about. It oh. was a, an unmitigated disaster for, for Joe, Joe Biden. Biden. Yes, absolutely. For the president, it was not the performance he needed. Not the one that the Democratic Party was clearly hoping, based on everything that they've said leading up to it, that wasn't what they wanted to see. In a minute, we are going to bring on somebody who may well decide this election, and that is Robert Kennedy Jr., who is the third party candidate running. Some people are calling him a spoiler, but he mm, has- Maybe he, not so much. He yeah. now, because of this debate, has a new life, which we're gonna get into with him in a minute. But I just wanna say one thing to you before we bring yeah. him on. Look at that picture there. Right. With his mouth agape, I know that his people worked for a week with him right. he on was out issues. Camp David. They were they were doing this whole prep. They had a mock stage. Right. Did anybody, they had a mock candidate? Did anybody videotape it to say, "Here's how you should look right. when you when when Donald Trump is speaking, and you shouldn't be looking off." into nowhere right. with your mouth open. With your agape. mouth open, right. It's, it's like- Or I, looking down, or there were a lot of times where he was looking down and his mouth was agape, which really scared me because I thought, did he fall asleep? Is he gonna fall over? Uh, it, what, you're right. Like, isn't that just the crazy? The visuals make a big difference and it seemed like, it seemed like he had a lot of facts and even though he got maybe, a lot of them wrong, maybe, too, maybe many. too many. Maybe too many. But the visual was not something that was, it uh, was clearly was not a and, priority. And everybody was thinking last night, it wasn't really about the issues, although, you know, because they spent- it, We knew where they both stood on the right, issues, right? It, it was just about presentation. And, you know, I gotta say, as, as bad as it was to watch and heartbreaking really to watch, um, look at Joe Biden leaving the stage yeah. with Joe Biden. I mean, that was just stunning to watch this. After everything you'd seen, for the 90 minutes of the debate, that was like the affirmation, this slow walk exactly. off with the first lady. It is terrible. Look, the Democrats are panicked. The convention is coming up in a little more than a month. You have a situation now where people are asking privately. They're saying, how do we get him to step down? Because there are other candidates in that's the wing. That's the first step. Yeah, that's the first step is how do we get him to step down? And the second step is who steps in? Who steps in? Right. There are, there are, there's a bench. Yeah. Um, but I, I just want to say one other thing, then we'll bring uh, Robert uh, Kennedy okay. Jr. in. Yeah. When you look at pictures of presidents, when they get in office and when they leave office, how they age is remarkable. It, because it always happens. It always happens. Even with the young president when we saw Barack, Barack Obama. Obama. Right. And, Absolutely. And so to watch Joe Biden and to watch him today and see the difference, what would the difference be between today and four years from now? Yeah. And that's what I think is giving people so much pause here. So um, let's bring in the person who is really at the center right now of what a lot of people are talking They've about. They've been calling him a possible spoiler, but maybe not so much at this point. Joining us once again on Team Z Live, RFK Jr. Welcome back, good to see you. Thank you, Charles, thank you, Harvey. I'm glad to be back with you. We're happy you're back. First, we just gonna wanna get a yeah. reaction to what happened last night. You know, I think it was a sad night for our country. There's 341 million people in our country and we're the template for democracy around the globe. And um, the, the idea that we, that that's the best that we can do, I think is a, a big, big disappointment. Um, I, I mean, I think President Biden accomplished something extraordinary, which was to make President Trump look kind of reasonable and and likable. Um, I also think from my own personal point of view that, uh, that nobody is accusing me of making President Biden lose to President Trump. I think the frailty that he showed and the, uh, it's sort of the, the you know, the, just the, the lack of mental acuity um, and vigor was, uh, I think, affected everybody who saw it. Even, you know, even MSNBC at the end was saying, uh, he's got to go. And you, I'm sure you read the New York Times this morning and all of the major liberal outlets are now calling for him to, to step down. But this is something we, we knew about for a while. We should mention that you actually made an offer in the interview with Dr. Phil that aired right before the debate. Um, you talked about this offer you had made to President Biden, basically have him drop out of the race and that you would take on Donald Trump does that seem more likely now? My offer to President Biden was let's do a poll together 
in October, well, co-funded, and whoever, whichever the of the two of us is less likely to be Donald Trump, the other one will will drop out. That person will drop out. I will drop out if I'm less likely to be Donald Trump, and if he agrees to do the same. So it's okay. called the spoiler pledge, and of, uh, of course, I I did not. Not surprisingly, I didn't hear back from the president. So there is some history here. Um, I remember that the only time in my lifetime when a sitting president decided not to run after he threw his hat in the ring was when your father ran in 1968, Lyndon Johnson dropped out of the race. If that happens with Biden, there are some obvious people here who might run, uh, and that would be Gavin Newsom, uh, Raphael oh, Warnack, man. Gretchen Whitmer, Wes Moore. Are any of those candidates palatable enough for you that you would throw your support behind them and not run? Or are you in it for the long haul? I, I would make the same deal with them that I offered to President Biden is let's see, let's let's run a poll and see if they're more likely to beat President Trump than me, and I will withdraw in October if they're more likely to beat him in a head-to-head -head race. I don't think that's going to happen. I think my numbers are the strongest against Donald Trump's, And but if they wanted to take that bargain, uh, I would take it. That would be an actually a very serious offer that you're making to one of these people. And the, the thing that was we found revealing about that offer um, was the fact that it kind of revealed that really the most important thing to you, it seems, is that Donald Trump is defeated. And we hadn't really heard that from you before. Is that the end goal here? I want to beat Donald Trump. I, I would want to beat President Biden, too. I, my, my job is, and my ambition is to be president. So, and I think I'm more likely to beat him than anybody else. But I don't think either of these choices are good choices. I think, you know, President Biden is probably more likely to get us into a nuclear war, which I think we're close to right now to a nuclear war than any time in history. I don't even know who's making the decisions in the White House, but this crazy decision that was made last week to, to shoot missiles onto, into Russia and kill civilians who are sunbathing on a beach with cluster bombs, which are are war crimes to even use them. They're, they're only for killing civilians. And to drop that on a civilian population is, uh, is such a, 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 a terrible provocation and such a reckless, risky decision. It's hard. And I, I mean, I, don't even, I, don't, I can't even imagine that President Biden was even consulted on that. Since the debate last night, um, what has happened with your campaign? Have people reached out to you? Have you heard about um, growing support? What's happened since uh, 9 o'clock last night, Eastern? We're getting a lot of attention in this campaign. It's trending all over, and we're getting deluged with requests from the press, but also just congratulatory notes from people who, you know, a lot of people who I don't know where, I didn't know where they stood. Um, just a lot of surprising people. Oh, it's, it's very, very gratifying. Will this help you get on uh, more ballots uh, in more states now? Because it seems like that's still the one hurdle that you would have in defeating either candidate. We're going to be on the ballot, and that's not going to be a problem. The issue is, you know, then if I can persuade people in this country to vote out of hope, my, my numbers are, are better than President Biden's or President Trump's in terms of favorability. Oh, if people want to vote for hope, if they want to, you know, if they want a different future, then they're going to vote for me. If they vote out of fear, then they're going to vote for President Biden and President Trump, and they're going to get more of the same. I want to pick up on something you said a minute ago, that there were certain people um, that were surprising who had reached out to you, presumably with support. It sounds like you don't want to say who, um, but can you characterize that um, are you talking about, you know, senators? You're talking about others in Congress who um, aren't necessarily, they don't want to necessarily come forward and say, we want Biden to step down, but are you kind of secretly getting these calls? And No, you... I'm not getting those. I'm not getting calls from people in Congress or high DNC people. Um, but I'm getting calls from people who are, um, who are lifelong Democrats and who 
sort of disappeared out of my life. And those are the kind of people I've been hearing from. Some of them are well-known people, you know, they're actors. Some of them are in politics, but not, uh, but peripherally um, and not, uh, not elected officials. I haven't heard it from any of them. Got it. All right. Well, this was um, a big day, a big night for you collaterally. Um, and I, I'm really fascinated by what you said, that if there is a new nominee, that um, you would do the same polling challenge same and yeah. either they would withdraw or you would withdraw. That's a big statement. So thank you uh, for coming on. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thanks, Charles. Thanks, Harvey. Great to see you guys as always. And thank good you, seeing Mr. you. Henry. Good to see you. Good seeing you. That is interesting. That yeah. is interesting. And that's a challenge somebody else might take up. Maybe. Because that way it's unified. Yes, it would be unified. Yeah. But I, I, accepting it, the problem with accepting the offer is that it can be seen as weakness. That you're. It could also be seen as strength. That you believe that you're, you know, both sides would say, right. uh, we believe we're, we're united gonna... to defeat Donald Trump. <laughs>